Welcome to the Land Geek Podcast, your resource for information and tips to making money by buying and selling land. Let the Land Geek show you how to make a passive income by working smart, not working hard. Learn strategies and tricks to make money buying and selling raw land today. And here is the man that's going to help you do that, the Land Geek. Hey, it's Mark the Land Geek again, and this week... I'm pleased to bring Duran Frazier from ReserveLand.com back into the mix. And this week, Duran, I've really got uh, my feathers in a ruffle. Is that the correct cliche? I'm, I'm not sure, but you did tell me you did uh, eight push-ups this morning. So if that has anything to do with it, yes. That's right. I'm, I'm pumped and ready. So we were just talking before the call. I've got a bunch of people getting started in the investor's toolkit and uh, and they want to know, okay, where should you focus your time? And when you, when you first get started in this business, where should you really, really, what's the first thing you should focus on? And, I, and I'll tell you a story. I, uh, I had a consultation with one of my students a week ago and he just starts and I said, okay, what have you done so far? So he watched the videos, he got the PDF downloads. First thing he did was started spending money on a website. Second thing he did was started spending money getting an EIN number, setting up an LLC, getting his corporation in order. Third thing he did was he spent money on an accounting program. So, Duran, tell me. Yes. Where are these, What what is his fatal flaw? What's the first thing that anyone should be doing when they first start the, this business. All those things are important, don't get me wrong, but they're tertiary. What's the first thing he should be doing? First of all, I love I love that word tertiary. That's that's number one. It yeah. kind of reminds me of uh, man, it's just it's such a such a such a good 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 word, and it's 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 not a um, you know it's 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 going back to what you're saying in terms of the in terms of the of the fatal flaw. I thought that your program was what taught them. To 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 help solve that problem. So I'm a little I'm a little curious as to know. Did you teach this man how to buy go buy a domain name and a website and put everything together? What happened here? Isn't is Wait, he, you're making this about me? Yeah, I mean, come on, Mark. I mean, you're the one that's teaching these poor guys. I mean, here he is. These poor guys. Started, that's started, that's why we give out the consultation <laughs> to get them straightened out when they like. I provide the information. It should be clear. What's the first thing he should be focusing on? Researching and buying a piece of land. Buy a piece of land first. Pennies on the dollar. Start your ad campaign. Go to a tax sale auction. More importantly, more importantly than buying a piece of land and researching is what? Mark. Exactly, Mark. Marketing. <laughs> exactly. I, had, I used to have a virtual assistant in Costa Rica. He'd say, it's not magic, it's Micah. His name was Micah, and he was great. <laughs> it's not magic, it's marketing. First thing you should do is set up an option offer, especially if you're, if you're concerned about you know, your, your, your uh, cash flow situation. Every business, I don't care what business it is, land, paper clips, a startup, the first thing you need is marketing, and you need to start selling. Now, marketing is different than selling, right? Correct. Correct. Marketing is creating copy to get people to become interested in what you are selling. Selling is the process of establishing a relationship with your customer that provides them more value than what they're actually paying for. Right? We only buy a Starbucks cappuccino for $4 because it to us, that caffeine high is worth $6, so we don't mind paying $4. Same thing when you start selling land. I don't care if it's a $100,000 piece of property. If they think it's worth $200,000, they'll plunk down happily $100,000. So, but you need to have that mindset first, is I'm going to acquire a piece of property, ideally lock up a piece of property, and start selling that property while it's locked up. Gauge the market and practice. So uh, some people are like, well, you know, I'm not comfortable marketing or selling. And uh, 
guess what? Get over it. You're going to have to practice it and practice it and practice it. Because if you're going to go from zero to a million dollars in this business, that's where your focus needs to be. Once you go from zero to a million, you can shift your focus a little bit away from the marketing, but not much. So when you start, I want your focus 80% to be on marketing and selling, 20% on buying up the properties, everything else is secondary. What do you think of that? Well, I, you, 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 I know I'm else, over 100%. Yeah, I was going to say, you I'll got say 100% I'll say 75, there. 25, 75, yeah. 24, 1%, percent, everything, everything else. else. <laughs> now, I agree 100%, Mark. I think you're, you're exactly right there. The focus needs to be on marketing. I mean, we, you and I have never been able to sell land without a really good ad in place. Uh, let's let's be honest here. We we could we could call. We Mark and I have sold so many properties without having to talk to people. Uh, it's it's funny. I I could, I could probably tell you. Mm, let's say eighty percent of my transactions have been email only, which is bizarre. I don't talk to very many of my buyers, but that's the neat part about it. I've got contracts in place with people. I've got hundreds of thousands of dollars in contracts with people that I have never once talked to on the phone. Now, you may say, that's crazy. But no, that's marketing. That's the way you do your marketing, the way you tell your, your buyers about the property. The more you tell them, the, the less time you spend on having to talk to them. Right. It's, it's an efficient process. And that's something I want to talk to is there's a way – to automate your sales funnel. Nobody's gonna come out from the cold and just buy from you right away. They need, you need to have some point of contact, right? Whether it's an email, uh, an email series, something of value so they get to know you. Now, if we're selling on eBay, do you know what that point of contact is? It's feedback. They can exactly. look and see, oh my gosh, this guy's done all these transactions I feel comfortable buying on eBay. So, and off, and off yeah. of eBay, Mark, just to interrupt real quick, and I apologize, but off of eBay, if you're really trying to build that aura around your ability to close deals or to be successful or to or be someone that your buyer can trust, you need to put a LinkedIn account together because people need to know who you are, what your past is, and, and, and not, you don't necessarily have to have an amazing past to sell property, but you need to be trusted. In order to be trusted, I've got several buyers of, of mine that are connected with me on LinkedIn. So it's, it, it's one of those things where you, you, that's, your, that's your offline, although it's not offline, your feedback off of eBay would be something like a LinkedIn just so that they can get an idea of who you are and what you're all about. Now, sure, you can utilize a Facebook page or, you know, Mark, you, you, I think you broadcast your, your, um, your personal Facebook page to people. No, so, I don't. I, I have okay. a company Facebook page. Oh, you do? Okay. Yeah. Yeah, I do front. I did. I have Frontier Properties Facebook, and I have the Land Geek Facebook. Got it. Got it. And I and I have been working on my uh, my social media strategy. I mean, it's been what a week, but I'm I'm working it. So marketing. Then the the number one thing I want you to start doing though is marketing that property. And then once you sell that property, I want that relationship to become solidified. Because once you have a customer, that customer knows you, trusts you, likes you, they voted for you, and if your main goal in life, which if you're in business, should only be one thing, that is to provide value and exceed your customer's expectations. The customer comes first. Nothing else comes first except the customer. If you don't have a if your VAs don't understand this and you don't create that culture, you you will make money. Don't get me long, don't get me wrong. You can make money for a year or two doing this. At year 10, you're out because you it's, haven't kept the customer first and foremost in your mind. And this goes back to if, if uh, we touch on the subject of getting into eBay back in the late, for me, the late 1990s, uh, early, early 2000s, uh, really heavily getting in, in the land game, there were about 15 of us that were buying and selling land. And then about three or four years into it, 2005, 2006, there was probably about 100 land sellers that were, that were buying more 
uh, more than at just one tax auction or or one area of the country. Uh, today, there's probably no more than I would say eight to ten successful people in the business, uh, of which only a handful still utilize eBay, but still a great marketing place to sell land. But unfortunately, it's just the costs and the flakes on that on the website make it a little bit more challenging. But at the end of the day. If you if you approach the business with integrity, with honesty, with like as Mark said, you know, a, you 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 add value to your customer. They're going to want to do business with you and more business with you, and of course, they're going to want to refer clients to you in, in the future. Right, right. So I set up a uh, a sales funnel, if you will, that's automated, and I spend a lot of time creating these emails so that. I keep building rapport, keep building rapport, keep adding something, something I can give them, right? So this weekend, I'm doing a uh, a promotion. Uh, one of my best properties, one of my last properties. Typically, when you have a, 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 a property that's your last one, you jack up the prices. Like, this is the last one, supply and demand, right? I'm going the opposite way. I'm lowering the price so that I can provide more value to my my existing customer base, and I'm selling a five acre piece now for only two thousand dollars. My last one in the subdivision. It's got a creek view. It's beautiful, right? It's a promotion. You should be constantly hitting your list with value. Provide them information that pertains to them and what they want to hear. So if your list is they like land, talk about land. The value of land, how you buy land, tips, and then so it's like a one. Uh, if, if you do five emails, maybe out of those five, four providing valuable information. One of them is going to ask them to do something, whether it's buy from you, refer someone to you, get into uh, another funnel. What do you think of that? I do think. You, do you I think well, you're do you boy something like that? You know what, Mark? I'll be honest with you. I'm going to have to start taking a lot of tips from you. In fact, I might have to take your course because I, as I slowly get back into the land game and as, as the listeners have heard over the last several podcasts, I'm getting back into land. And I have a very interesting system that I use that's a little different than you. I'm, I'm a very good communicator. I get a lot of leads on a daily basis and I respond to those leads and I actively pursue these leads. But not through a funnel system of marketing, which, again, having that in place is a lot more successful than something that I have. But at the end of the day, it's, it's not I, – I need to be doing more, and I need to be doing more of everything that I'm doing if I'm going to become successful. Back, I mean, look, it's, it's, I'm in, I'm in land, land buying and selling uh, 102. I've passed the 101 course over the last 8 to 10 years, but I actually pulled out uh, – I guess you could say I'm a dropout – um, I didn't. I mean, I was successful at it, but I pulled out of the game because for me, I wasn't intrigued uh, by the by the way prices were in 2008, 2009. So, so having that structure in place for me now is something that I need I need to focus on. So, as you're focusing on social media, I need to put and I'm working on putting this in place, uh, you know, amongst other things. Um, but you know, with the acquisition I just picked up, I think 50 to 60 properties over the last couple of months. I have some work to do. Right, right. And the way that I've been doubling my revenue. Uh, each month is employing an and then strategy. So I'll give you an example. When I was in college, I uh, I worked at a, a suit shop called Harry Levinson's at, in Indiana. And so when someone would come in and we'd try to sell them a suit, they came in, they wanted a suit. Then what did we sell them, right? They needed a shirt. So we put a shirt out with that suit. Then, oh, that's nice. How about a tie? We put a tie out with that suit. Oh, how about some socks? We throw a sock in. So when you added it all up, psychologically, yeah, they came in for maybe a $400 suit, but what's another $150 when you're going to spend $400 and you're getting all this value? So the same concept applies to land. So when I buy a piece of land from Duran, I'm I'm already in that buying mode. So what does Duran say to me? Okay, so you just bought 40 acres in Nevada. You know what's interesting? I just bought another 20-acre piece just three miles down the road from there. And because you're an existing customer, 
I can do this for you. Oh, really? Now, okay, that's great. Oh, and by the way, I don't know if you're interested in this area of the country, but I just bought this as well. So, and this is what I've been doing. So instead of selling maybe one 40 acre piece, I'm selling that same person a 40 acre piece, a 10 acre piece, a five acre piece until there's just no more money for and them then, to spend. And- and then, wow, Mark, that, and you know, they're really he, happy about it. It's, it's, it's I know. Do you, it's, do you yeah. sleep at night? No, no, no. But, but that, you know, and that's the difference is that <laughs> psychologically people keep thinking about needs and wants. And this is where people get tripped up on selling and marketing is like, well, nobody needs, you know, another piece of, of land. You know, how do I know? You don't know and don't prejudge anyone in their pocketbook. If they come to you, they're buying from you because they're enjoying the experience of buying from you. They're enjoying the value they're getting, and they value land. That's the only asset that lasts forever. Everything else goes away, everything except for that piece of land. This can be their legacy. So feel proud to keep offering that value to your customer. Don't just stop at one. So people say, oh, he doesn't need it. We don't need anything in life. We're human beings. We need very simple things, right? Food, well, clothing, a little bit of shelter. And, of course, your Maserati, Mark. And you're, and exactly. So I don't need a fancy car. I don't need – you don't need to live uh, in Carlsbad off the beach. You I'm, can moving. Have, I'm right? moving. I'm moving. I'm moving next to you. <laughs> so but what I'm saying is like if you really look at our lives – I mean, look, I have an iPhone. I don't need an iPhone. I could have bought a, I could have got a free phone, right? But I tell myself I'm getting more value. I like the way that this, what this does for me. So 99% of what we get in life, we don't really need, but we want it. So we need as uh, a marketing company to keep stoking that flame and creating this buying frenzy. And it makes me crazy when my students don't do this. It makes me absolutely nuts when they stop. So it's really, really important. And I know this is more mastermind stuff that we really get into. And Duran and I, when we talk about talk about uh, some of my other students, when we talk about the details of a deal, we get really get into the mastermind stuff. This is where I really start, you know, becoming more Socratic. Like, well, did you do this? Did you do that? Did you think of this? And and as far as marketing platforms as well, you can't stick to one Mac marketing platform. eBay is great when you first start and you start building up your customer list, but then you need to start really developing other channels because everyone needs a plan B. What happens if the eBay market becomes saturated, right? So we always have to have a plan B, and and these are more mastermind type of discussions, but I think it's important in this podcast that you know, you're thinking about that, and I don't care what business you're in, that's business. It's marketing, it's selling. Every successful business does it, when you walk to, into the grocery store, what do they have right before you check out? They've got the gum, they've got the candy, they've got the kid stuff, right? That's another sales channel for them because they know you're already at the end of your buying purchase and you pretty much got everything that you needed and wanted. Everything in that line there, nobody needs another you know, breath mint or a piece of gum or a piece of candy, but those kids want it and that's why they have it there and that's really where they get their their margin from. So it's something to think about. Yeah, that's, and you know, Mark, touching on your plan B, we can kind of look back at some of the things that we've done together as a team. Uh, one of them being that we actually evolved from buying and selling land to actually buying a very large chunk of land, 40,000 plus acres in Nevada, and actually doing our own subdivision work, which nobody was doing at the time. So we went and we evolved because we knew that eBay wasn't going to do it. We knew that that you know the other sites that we used at that time, bid for assets, wasn't going to do it. So what we did is we went we went in a pattern that was evolving. And how were we going to make money that was different than everybody else? And that was well, we're going to subdivide our own land and we're going to make money that way. So it's always in your mind. And again, from a marketing aspect, from every aspect, you've always got to evolve the brain and think differently, creatively. How am I going to sell this property? How am I going to market it differently? So that's that's really important. Right, right. And uh, you know, I hate to compliment Duran because it just hurts me inside. But I have to tell you, the reason Duran is so successful is not – I mean, he's got grit and determination persistence. All those things are really important. But he's innovative. 
he looks out at the marketplace and he puts his own spin on it, right? So everybody at that time was buying property here and there. Dran looked at the market and said, oh, well, here's a big opportunity. Here's the way that we can do this. We can create our own subdivisions. But he doesn't just stop there. He, he, he's, he's always, always doing, doing that. And, and it's, it's really, really, really helped him helped as far as uh, getting, you know, his business to the next level because he's constantly innovating. And once you get after, once you hit that million dollar mark in your business, that's what you and your team really need to spend time on as well. And again, this is more mastermind stuff is, you know, innovating. So your marketing needs to become innovative. Your uh, selling needs to become innovative. Your buying strategies, where you buy, needs to become more innovative. You need to be this uh, constantly moving target so you don't get Samsunged, right? You know what I mean by Samsung? Apple comes out with the iPhone. What does Samsung do? They copy it. And now Samsung is innovating. Now they have the phablets and they're taking market share from Apple. Fantastic job. When you first start on the Investor's Toolkit, that's what I want you to do with me and Duran is I want you to Samsung us, right? You're going to start, you're going to copy our approach because you know it's successful. But then, once you start getting the sales in, I want you to become innovative. And that's more mastermind stuff and will help you do that. But something to think about. Yep. And Mark, I, I totally agree with you. And first off, thank you for um, making my head bigger because, gosh. Well, I'm not, I'm not doing that again, by the way. That's, that's I, it. My he- I could barely fit through the bathroom door this morning. So I'm glad. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I. I'm not a person who I do appreciate that, and and I try to be as humble as possible. And I am, I you know, it's funny as 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 big as my mouth is sometimes, and as verbal as I am, I'm, I actually I I I think I'm a humble guy, and I don't ever think about the past. I know a lot of people go, "Oh, it's so cool, you own thousands of acres in Nevada." You know, what? it's all it's all a widget to me. It was all just fun. It's the art of the deal that makes me happy and excites me, just like you, Mark. So right. I I think it's it, people should know that you know the you know going back to the innovative side of things. I, right now, I'm in a very innovative uh, mindset in, with land. I'm very, very, very attracted to doing different things that are not the norm for land. And I will change the land game, which Mark knows. I'm working on a very large real estate platform right now, uh, which is going to cost me probably several hundred thousand dollars to do. Uh, but I believe it's a game changer. Now, there's a lot of things that need to be done before I get there. And I need to do a lot of research, as Mark pointed out to me in a phone call the other day. Hey, they're, they're- oh, yeah, that, that's a mastermind thing. We're going to talk about total market, total market analysis uh, and, and how you, how you uh, really uh, – Look at your marketplace first before you jump into any type of new venture. And and Duran knows a lot about total market analysis because he's a startup guy. But even in land, when we look at a different type of uh, innovative uh, area or uh, maybe a different product line, if you if you will, all we I mean, no one likes to do it, but you've got to do it. We have to do a total market analysis, and that's for a different conversation. But yep. um, it's so important. Yeah, and Mark, I was just going to add. So one of the you know one of the interesting things that that's going on right now with um, with the internet and with crowdfunding and all these different new aspects. And although startup and land are sort of never really, I mean, they've never really paralleled each other. Um, right now is such an interesting and intriguing time because there's a lot of different ideas that are coming uh, into my mind, and, and I think a lot of other people are thinking about it. Uh, one being crowdfunding real estate, and I and I'll tell you. This may help, and this may. This is where my brain sort of gone the last few weeks. But there's a se- there's several platforms that are out there right now that are crowdfunding commercial concepts. So going out building a building and having 55 or 555 people involved in funding that commercial project, and then taking an equity piece of that project. Okay, so let's say they they want to build an office building, and it's right in the heart of New York City, and they need you know it's a it's a thirty million dollar project, and everybody chips in a hundred grand, whatever. I'm just throwing out numbers. So so what what these crowdfunding projects do is, and what the internet's allowing to do is to go and find a different marketing channel for people to get involved in an idea that maybe you've put together, and it's not it's not rocket science. It's just creativity and you have to be creative to make it work. And so for me right now, I'm looking at these different crowdfunding platforms and thinking of ways that I could leverage some of my ideas within my projects. Now, remember, I'm a mining developer. I'm an alternative energy developer. 
And of course, at the end of the day, I'm a, I'm a land salesman, but I buy and sell land or my company does and, and my employees help me do that. That's what I do. But I want to find ways to continue to sell land. And I don't like the stagnation of the, you know, the basic sites like Land Watch, Lands of America, because they don't really help you innovate. They just allow you to advertise. At the end of the day, they are, they are trying to make money themselves. So they're not very buyer friendly. Right, right. But, um, you know, I think it's I think it's important. What you're saying is that you can create a syndicate now, or online. I mean, that's really what you're doing is you're getting a group of people together to invest money in your project. That's a syndicate, but you're doing it without the friction of having to go door to door, friend to friend, and make that presentation individually or in a group setting yourself you can go out now and expand that net to thousands if not hundreds of thousands of people who are interested in investing in real estate but even if they don't know you that's a tough sell which is i mean any kind of syndicate's tough to do because you have to have that trust but if you can put together a presentation show somebody the roi your past history yeah i, I think it's a great idea it's, and, and it's, I, it's kickstarter for real estate and I and I what I'm trying to what I'm trying to uh, I suppose educate the crowd on here is simply that you don't you, a lot of these people and, and and all these listeners are are from different backgrounds different genres some are some may be CEOs some may be you know a nine to five some may be a greeter at Walmart whatever they are the the fact of the matter is they have a background and they have a background in a certain field that's probably not real estate. And but it's probably something that's very helpful in educating and in, in educating other people on what they'd like to do. Maybe they're farmers. Maybe they want to grow a specific type of jatropha tree that produces something for, you know, whatever the case is. You know, you're you're trying to create something that's not already on the market, and 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 it the real estate may actually allow that opportunity. And that's all I'm saying. I'm not, I'm not trying to say, Hey, it's, it's just a, to me, it's just a different route for you to go and a different way to think. And, and again, I'm always trying to sort of innovate in my brain, uh, a new, you know, concept of how to market real estate or what to do with the real estate. Right. Right. And yeah, you know, so yeah, it gets back down to that, that basic fundamental thing that we talked about in the beginning of the podcast is really you need to spend the majority of your time as CEO of your land business, marketing. I, you can hire a copywriter. That's fine. But at the end of the day, you can't let your marketing team dictate to you what you're going to do with your land. You need to be the driving force. You need to be the one pushing your team to constantly be innovating, constantly be looking to market and look at different channels. That's really where I want your focus when you first start. Buy the land pennies on the dollar. That part's easy. It's the marketing and it's the selling that is going to drive you from zero to a million dollars very, very quickly. So if you can picture it like an airplane, right? When you first start an airplane, it, it's going, it's going, it's taking all this energy. You hear the engine whirring, it takes all this energy. All of a sudden, it picks up and it just soars. That's what it's going to take for you when you first get started. It is going to take a lot of that energy in the beginning buying land and then marketing that land. But as you put putting your team together and you have that money flowing in, then you can start soaring and you can start outsourcing a lot of the tertiary duties of recording the deed, creating the contracts, your accounting. All those things are secondary in this business. You need to be the head salesperson from day one. So, so important. So I know I've been on my soapbox this podcast. I, I typically am more, uh, you know, open about asking questions to Duran. And, uh, but I, it just really got me going when uh, on that, on that uh, consultation call. When my student starts uh, completely doing the things that are secondary to the business because – if you go through my investor's toolkit, that's a reflection on me. You've got to be successful. I want that testimonial from you. So when you start, start the right way. Don't focus on anything secondary. Number one, buy it right. And number two, sell it. Once the money starts coming in, that's the fuel 
to, to do the other things, which are secondary. And that never, ever is going to end. You're always going to be the head marketing person of your of your company. From from a million to ten million, it can your your focus is going to be on managing your marketing team as opposed to being the, the lead guy. But you're still the lead guy as the manager for that team, and still driving that direction, still, still being the Duran innovator, if you will, of what channels and what ad campaigns you're going to be working on. Yeah. So. And I- I just, want, I just want to interject for a minute. I didn't take my medication today, hence all my crazy, crazy ideas. So please forgive me. <laughs> so, Duran, uh, we've been talking a lot about marketing. Uh, what's your, your tip of the week? My tip of the week is uh, one, one of the easier templates uh, or ways to put a template together for a piece of land uh, is on a website called vflyer.com, V as in Victor, F-L-Y-E-R.com. And vFlyer basically allows you. It has a little syndicate. It's uh, you know it, with inside the system where once you once you publish your um, your land ad, it can go to eBay, it can go to Oodle and all these other different you know various websites, Craigslist, uh, and so it's basically you can build an ad. I think you can do up to ten free, five or ten free. I'm not sure exactly how it is, but it's a great little way to to build a template without having to go really get or understand or learn HTML. And, and build out something. This thing's there. You can blast it to Craigslist, and you can already market your ad instantly with for free on vFlyer. I love it. I love it. So my tip of the week is not free. Um, however, I think it's so, so important. And when you first get started, if you're going to spend money on anything, this is worth spending money on. And I have a link to it um, on the site. It's aweber.com. And what aweber allows you to do is automate your email sales funnel with your customers. So you bring leads in, you have touch points of rapport and value, and then you ask them at some point to buy. And it's really, really important for your marketing pieces to automate that. And AWeber makes it really easy. They have templates. And um, as we get more involved uh, in my uh, mastermind sessions, I'll even give you uh, my uh, sales funnel templates that I actually use, which, again, so important to just Samsung me at this point, and then you can innovate from there and make it more your own. So, Duran, what are we going to talk about next week? Uh, Memorial Day, what you did for Memorial Day, how good your social media campaign is going. All right, we'll, we'll catch up on my social media campaign, but we've got lots more to talk about. So I want to thank everybody for taking the time this week to listen to our podcast. If you want to learn more about Duran and his innovative land solutions, go to reserveland.com. And uh, if you want to uh, learn more about me, please go to thelandgeek.com, download the in, uh, the investor's uh, passive income blueprint, and. Uh, also, like me now on the Facebook page. Uh, I think it's just facebook.com slash thelandgeek. Uh, you can also look at my property at frontierpropertiesusa.com. And uh, everyone out there, have an extraordinary week. Stay focused on marketing. It's not magic. It's marketing. This is Mark Podolsky with Duran Frazier, The Land Geek Out. Thanks. Thank you for listening to another episode of The Land Geek. Join us next time for more tips, secrets, and information that will help you succeed. Stay connected with The Land Geek on Facebook at facebook.com slash thelandgeek.